Okay, we're back uh, with Las Vegas. Seems to be a popular spot for UFOs. <laughs> and uh, this is a uh, pretty unusual, uh, Peter. We haven't seen something like this yet. No, uh, whether or not it's the shape of the thing or the particular refraction of the light, it's coming off as like a four-pointed star. I, I believe the four point is a, ref a refraction. Would make sense uh, to me as well. Uh, but uh, whatever it is, it seems to be a, a pretty substantial yeah substantial amount of, of light uh, although I think that's also maybe an effect that he's uh, zooming yeah uh, so it's hard to tell what it, what is exact shape exactly uh, plus we don't know whether it's zooming going on or an actual uh, distancing of the thing we're seeing right what is the true shape of the object yeah. but uh, but it is, it's, it's a puzzling uh, image. And it is the first one we've seen with this kind of either configuration or uh, optical uh, characteristic. Yeah, although I believe we'll see a few others too uh, later on. Mm. And uh, Vegas, of course, uh, in part because of the, of the Area 51 almost mythology now yes. has become a very popular spot for uh, for UFOs. It's true. Uh, also, it's only about 80 miles, as we mentioned earlier, from the site of uh, the large base where all the tests are done. Okay, back in Japan. Yeah. Uh, again, a tubular-shaped uh, visual image coming in over the hillside or disappearing over it there. Yeah, it's a strange, a very short one. Uh, now we back in the USSR, uh, shortly before it... Uh, it broke up, I guess, into different countries. Now, we have only one figure ground reference in this, which is that uh, darker dot in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, we are assuming that we're looking at this against the sky. Uh, it's behaving, uh, well, non-standard in terms of... Uh, uh, yeah, because before, I, but again, when it starts breaking into two objects, uh, it uh, becomes more, more intriguing. It does indeed. And uh, another one from uh, the old USSR. Oh, this is a quite uh, famous one. Uh, yes. This has been on uh, many documentaries. Uh, this one, I, I must say, I like this one. I, I find it very credible. Yeah. Um, it is, once again, that classic uh, tubular or cigar shape. You can see a, a suggestion of dimension from the shadowing underneath. Right, and initially my first impression would be, well, maybe in a high altitude plane, but it's not moving. No. So that, uh, that uh, is not a good explanation. And if it was an inflatable, it certainly would be moving. It would be uh, moving, yeah. With the air current, uh, we see that once again on the ground, in terms of the actual experience, we have uh, captured the interest of yeah. folks all over who yeah. can see Soldiers, it. Soldiers, many people, so obviously it's... Uh, was, was seen uh, widely. Right. People were stopping and looking at something for a certain reason, and it's very important to remember that when we watch this footage, we may be watching footage that's reproduced several times. So uh, to bear in mind that that, so to say, audience reaction is worth taking into consideration. Right. Okay. Now we move into Belgium, and um, of course uh, this is from 1990, and that was at the peak of the famous uh, Belgium wave. Yeah. Uh, which was uh, characterized by triangular shaped objects. Very much so, and they were uh, endemic over Belgium and France for that spring and summer. In fact, you may remember that June I was uh, in the south of France speaking at a conference, and uh, this was the cover story on that month's Paris match. Oh, yeah. Oh, I remember that article in Paris Match. Yeah, of course, I have to say, though, that this film uh, was explained by the Sobeps. Uh, the Sobeps was the main... Uh, uh, UFO organization in Belgium, mm. uh, very serious people that did an excellent job of documenting and they uh, concluded that it was an aircraft actually uh, which because of um, certain atmospheric conditions mm. you know it looked uh, it looked like a triangular craft, but... Uh, there the were other triangular sightings, though, over France and uh, Belgium that season that were not so easily explained. Oh, no, I'm not explaining at all yeah. all the Belgium flap, uh, just uh, these particular... I'm just saying what the Sobeps yeah. uh, said. Um, but I think it's uh, also worth noting that for anyone that's traveled in Europe, although it's a generalization, uh, the Belgians are generally regarded as certainly one of the most conservative nations. And for any of us who have friends who come from there, the idea of thousands of Belgian individuals coming forward 
and saying I saw a UFO is in itself worthy of, uh, well, uh, some serious consideration. Yeah, and it wasn't just the Sobeps, but as you remember, it was the, um, the Royal Belgian Air Force yes. and also the Gendarmerie, the police, and uh, it was an extraordinary display of uh, cooperation. It was between, something the uh, Americans could learn right. a real lesson from, where uh, civilian research groups who 